Carbiotics, which is presented by CEO Christopher Cook. Welcome. Yeah, thank you, Cecilia. Uh, Carbiotics is a company that's truly in the nexus of food tech and life science and is really pioneering the area of microbiome healthcare. Uh, the company itself is an award-winning biotechnology company covering two different areas, modulators, including ingredients, medical foods, therapeutics, as well as gut health testing, which means fundamentally we're dealing with both the intervention as well as the way to validate whether we achieve a certain efficacy. Uh, the mission of the company is very focused. Our, our focus is on the area we call prebiotic soluble fibers. And what we want to do is increase uh, these in people's diets by doing three things. Manufacturing the lowest cost and most effective prebiotic, again, a balance between the two. Uh, getting this to market in as many forms as channels and as possible, as I mentioned, uh, regarding ingredients, medical foods, but also many, many different partners. And last but not least, validating the efficacy. Again, uh, spearheading this effort towards full transparency and the personalization of uh, impacts on people. Now, what is this microbiome? Well, we know that when we consume uh, different things such as prebiotics and probiotics and uh, polyphenols, et cetera, we're promoting uh, carbohydrate, carbohydrate uh, fermentation and the production of uh, positive or good metabolites such as butyric acid. And we know if we're consuming, for example, meats, uh, alcohol, et cetera, we're promoting uh, protein fermentation, which is essentially producing uh, toxic elements or metabolites. In the latter case, what is happening is it's uh, introducing leakage in the gut, which is having negative impact, impacts on many things. So we know that gut health itself has a bearing on multiple health factors from blood sugar uh, to cholesterol regulation to mineral absorption and the risk of developing multiple chronic and metabolic diseases. But most importantly, especially now in the time of COVID, we know that 70% of the uh, immune system sits in this gut-associated lymphoid tissue in the gut, and therefore having good gut health is of uh, grave importance. We know also that gut health uh, changes over time, or at least the probiotic bacteria profile, the host probiotic bacteria profile. And as an infant, we have a high diversity in a lot of these probiotics, and as, as we get older, they become less, and as we go into a disease state, uh, they go down as well. But this is also impacted by diet, medicine use, stress, sleep, etc. And therefore, it makes it a, a significant challenge to measure, almost like a moving target when you're trying to optimize gut health. Now, the company itself is focused on essentially two areas, as I mentioned earlier. The first area is the diagnostic area, and the second area is the modular area. And I'll go into both of these. What happened back in roughly 2017, is that when we, we collected multiple samples uh, uh, from our customers, we saw that up to 25% of those samples had uh, some element of this natural variability, as I mentioned earlier, impacted by diet, exercise, uh, as well as air in the sampling itself. And it dawned upon us that the business model, which was transposed essentially from 23andMe in the genomic area into the microbiome area by early pioneers in this field back in 2012-13, didn't really consider this factor of natural variability. Therefore, it became quite logical for us after testing a PCR technology and longitudinal testing to introduce what we call a more reliable gut health test, the triplicate test. And that's what we introduced earlier this year through a, a, a service we called OneGut. Uh, this test is the most cost-effective test per vial in the world today. For, so for the same price as uh, all competitors, not only in Sweden, but globally, we offer a, uh, a gut health test in triplicate. So three times the reliability. We're targeting this uh, to consumers, but as you'll see, we quite recently moved over to what we consider uh, a B2B transaction as an access point to these consumers. And this market today is roughly 100 million euros, but I think within uh, a reasonable time frame, uh, uh, this market will grow substantially. And it is growing substantially as well as the importance of gut health grows. Now, how do we get this to market? Uh, as late as actually early, uh, depending on your perspective, as uh, two weeks ago, we introduced uh, LinkGut as our primary channel to market for our one gut service, which means that any food and beverage company, uh, any supplement company, any health and wellness company, as well as pharma company, 
we build them at no cost, a website extension or through an API integration, their own gut health test that they can offer to their customers to validate their products focused uh, not only in the general gut health area, but more specifically on the utilization of prebiotics, but also to help build better products, formulate better products and get to know their customers more, thus build uh, brand loyalty. And in this link gut service, we've also in, uh, integrated the study gut service that we had previously, which is essentially one can take the customer base and do more extensive studies. So now we have one channel to market through the link gut concept, which is a B2B service that we offer now, as I said, food and beverage companies and nutraceutical companies. But why do we do this? Well, fundamentally, this is a driver for modulator sales. If we look at the uh, gut health area in terms of gross margins compared to modulator uh, uh, margins across the ingredient side as well as the uh, medical foods and therapeutics, significant difference, 25% versus 75 to 95%. So we utilize the diagnostic platform as a way to build relationships with potential customers and their customers of these modules, modulators, uh, as well as identified multiple channels to market as ingredients, medical foods, therapeutics, but also through health, health and wellness companies, et cetera. And then build this huge advocate base for the modulators as well in academia and in business as well. So in terms of the modulator side, what is our first product? You know, our ambition is to have multiple products, but our first product is called Axis. It's an Aravino Xylo Oligosaccharide derived from the brand of corn, but we can use different products for this. Now this product is up to 10 times more effective than at market products, which we validated essentially in the very beginning, uh, back in 2015. It has unique uh, key functional properties such as emulsification, and is at a price point which is in line with first generation products. So again, in line with first generation products, uh, seven and a half to 10 euros per kilo, and up to 10 times more effective. And our ambition there is to capture as much value as possible with this particular product. And it's entering a market, which is today a 5 billion euro market in comparison to the 50 billion euro probiotics market, but this market is growing substantially. The second modulator class or category is considered uh, a medical food, and it's a pure form of this access product. And here's an example here of this pure form. And today uh, we'll be carrying out quite soon actually, two studies, one in the CVD area and one in the uh, 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 type two diabetes area as a co-treatment or co-intervention. Uh, the market for medical foods is much larger than that of prebiotics and is also growing globally. So we're very excited about this and the promise of looking into uh, the application of this particular ingredient in additional studies. Last but not least is the therapeutics area. And we know that we can use this access product as a backbone to formulate different symbiotics uh, to uh, have a, a positive impact. Again, targeting a co-treatment application and not living under the illusion we can have that as a primary treatment. So we, we will be using it with uh, existing pharmaceuticals at market as well as in development, targeting the same areas as the, uh, as the medical food. Uh, the market in this case, is uh, somewhat smaller, but is growing substantially quicker than the other markets as well. So, in summary, uh, this slide, I think, uh, summarizes uh, our main competitive advantages, why we're different, and why uh, the bet we're making will be successful going forward as well. And the first topic is, is that of species diversity versus targeting specific species and the metabolite focus. At the heart of this, we're focusing on the utilization of a soluble fiber or prebiotic. And we know that this is deficient in about 99% of people, uh, especially at levels, for example, which I consume. I'm consuming up to upwards of 30 grams a day of a soluble fiber. And we know that that's feasible uh, for multiple individuals as well. Uh, secondly, the single sample test versus the multi-sample test. As I alluded to earlier, with gut health testing, there is natural variability, there is error, and therefore the company that can offer a multi-sample test will have a higher reliability, and thus making it much more attractive. Single point sampling versus longitudinal sampling. We know there is no silver bullet 
And therefore, the only way to find a solution in the gut health area or utilization of the microbiome to improve general health is essentially to uh, monitor someone over time and see the impact of different interventions. The generic intervention based on clinical studies versus the personalized intervention, the future is personalization. It's inevitable, it's coming, and we're extremely well positioned to take advantage of that and leverage our, our technical platform. Gut disease focus which is versus broad disease focus. Most of the individuals operating in this area are essentially focusing on the gut area. However, we see the promise and the potential of utilizing uh, gut health to improve, for example, the pharmacokinetics of different drugs, uh, addressing side effects of different drugs, and essentially generally improving these areas that I mentioned before in terms of mineral absorption, regulation of blood sugar, cholesterol, uh, and most importantly, immune system integrity. And last but not least, the microbiome focus versus the holistic focus. We're a company that is very humble. Uh, we recognize the limitations of the microbiome test, and we want to include it as, in as many service providers of holistic services as possible. They can collect the blood work. They can collect the genomic data. We'll provide the microbiome uh, service at the best cost possible. And what do we do there? we establish a very good platform to introduce our modulator. So thank you for your time. I'm happy to answer questions. Thank you. That's good, because I have a couple of questions for you. Good. Thank you. Um, you have just reported uh, quite an eventful Q3. So what can we look ahead to for the fourth quarter? Well, as I said in my presentation, um, uh, the most important thing right now is making progress in connection with the modulator. So this access product. Um, so what you're going to see, and I've communicated this earlier as well, is a defined plan for that scale up. And, and a plan where we capture as much value as possible, not only next year, but going forward as well in the different product groups. Um, on the modulator side, or sorry, on, on the diagnostic side, uh, obviously we made that transition to uh, 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 the link gut service, which is a B2B service. And then I think um, um, reporting on additional link up partners and uh, standout partners as well. Those can, who could potentially have a significant positive impact on the company, but also drive significant modulator sales going forward. Uh, that's something I think that uh, is important. And then obviously in connection with Axis, there's the, the, the ongoing regulatory work as well. Okay. Yeah. Um, in general, gut health seems to be an area that is attracting more and more attention. What would you say about the competitive landscape in this area? Uh, as I alluded to uh, in the presentation, uh, we are taking a different um, uh, position. Um, being a Canadian... <laughs> <laughs> it's very different, and, be, and, 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 a, and, a, and a hockey player at the rep uh, uh, level as well, I can always uh, refer to sort of a quote of Wayne Gretzky. You want to you skate to where the puck is going to be. Uh, we're making a bet that uh, to be successful in this business, you have to hit the prebiotic. It has to be a component because we know that utilization of, of probiotics, although a market that's 10 times bigger uh, than the market we're operating in, um, those probiotics cannot inhibit host probiotics. So we see the need definitely for mixtures between uh, uh, probiotics and prebiotics, but not at the expense of host probiotic species. So this is a key factor, and this is why we're driving and pushing so hard our modulator, which is a prebiotic. Then it's about the measurement, the validation of the efficacy, right? Getting this to market through as many channels as possible. Others, food and beverage products and nutraceuticals, our own medical foods and therapeutic products. Capturing as much value as possible. Uh, others may be content with just mm -hmm. a consumer product. We want to be in a B2B scenario. So we want to have access points to as many potential market opportunities as possible, but not be seen. Mm -hmm. We will be behind the scenes, but we'll be everywhere. Mm -hmm. If we look at next year in terms of milestones, if you had to put it into two or three milestones that you hope to achieve during next year, which would those be? Uh, I consider this year to be a transition year, both in terms of moving from the consumer to the uh, uh, B2B link gut diagnostic focus, and moving from R&D to an early scale up on the polyphase for the axis ingredient. And, uh, and putting in place this plan, which will be shortly communicated, as I've communicated many times before. Uh, next year, 
uh, is going to be a breakout year for the company. It's going to be a breakout year in terms of the maturity of the Linka platform, uh, API integration across multiple uh, different partners, uh, new and exciting partners in the um, uh, the space for food and beverage products and nutraceutical products, access at market, so fulfillment of the regulatory requirements, production scale, supplying this and actually selling it, uh, in this case for uh, uh, US applications. Um, um, those are, the, those are fundamentally the areas that are extremely exciting. For me, however, I, I look at this from the perspective of uh, how, can you, how can one create as much value as possible? And, uh, and when we establish the strategy of the company, uh, we ask the question, um, should we aim for something that within, hypothetically, a five-year horizon could reach a 10x? And when, the, and when the fundamentals catch up, that is the end point in terms of value increase. Or should we set the foundation, put the building block blocks in place, which would allow for a company to be built up to where it captures as much value as possible in four industries, which are multi-billion euro industries. Mm -hmm. So the, the prebiotic industry, so the actual ingredient, the diagnostic industry, the medical food and the therapeutic industries. And success in one of those industries breeds success in the other. So there's a synergy effect between these industries. So if you're successful in one, there's a higher likelihood you'll be successful in the others. Um, and where we set the basis of not reaching that cap in five years, but setting a trajectory where you could reach 100x in a 10-year period and beyond. That's the position we've taken in the company. And it may cause frustration in the early years because we're not able to achieve maybe that level of success because we're you know, rooted in establishing the foundation of production, but it pays significant dividends in the long run. Hmm. And that's the position I've taken. I've invested in multiple companies. I've started multiple companies. I continue to start multiple companies, but this is the only company I'm operational in. And the motivation is quite strong. Uh, uh, and that is, I think, a, a clear justification of the promise I think that this company has as well. Well, thank you for coming here and telling us about it. Yeah, it's a pleasure, Cecilia. Uh